All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day 30 of the Nerf Surf and Turf Extravaganza. This is the detailed view of what's going down. Now, as I mentioned to you, we are going to every other day. I mean, a lot is happening on the map, but um, but since it's pared down now to four major alliances, um, we have sort of backed off just a little bit. And uh, when I say four, I mean, one of those is a double alliance, uh, sort of bonded. But anyway, um, kind of backed off the everyday stuff just a little bit. Um, if something super crazy or eventful happens, um, we'll bounce back in there. And and so I will say something fairly eventful has happened. So we'll talk about that as we move forward. So I'm, I'm super surprised here to find that um, Southern USA is not only still around, but actually has some decent armies on the map, you know, is fielding uh, some naval uh, power that is significant. Five cruisers and 100 infantry is, that, that's something, you know, that's something that could, could actually, uh, you know, do some damage here. So way to go, staying relevant here. Got some bombers coming over. That's always frustrating getting your air force from the new world over. Believe me, I've done it a few times before. It's very frustrating. And then if there are any subs in the water, oh no, that's not good at all. All right, so let's kind of just see what's going on here. Um, we talked about this in the previous cast here. What has now happened is we had this sort of um, one of the dominant, uh, you know, coalitions. I, I would have put them in first place. Uh, another of the, the major coalitions, I would have put them in second place. But when I say first and second, it was it was close there. It was real close. Um, and then we had sort of the the Western European alliance who had as their vassal states down here, a couple others. Um, so kind of a team of five down here, which I thought that was pretty scrappy and cool for them to bond together in that way. So what happened was this. Um, we had, and this was this was made, uh, I was made aware of this um, a couple days ago in, in a couple of different ways. And so we'll, we'll kind of wade through this. Um, it's some in interesting sort of philosophical ideas going on here. So apparently these two coalitions, the main coalitions agreed that they would uh, stay uh, non-aggression, not that they were helping each other or trading or anything like that, but just non-aggression with each other um, until one of them reached, I think, 750 points. But the amount of points is not relevant. They had reached sort of this agreement that then they'd have sort of this grand shootout at the end, which I thought that's pretty cool, you know. And I know players on both sides are honorable. And so, and you know, I'd, I'd sort of kind of made a big deal of that in the game. Let's not let's try not to just, you know, say something and then do something exactly opposite. You can suggest something or you can move troops in a certain direction and, you know, you can misdirect and all that. So um, pretty solid. And I think they'd been going with that for probably several days, maybe more. And uh, and so at a certain point, though. I believe what happened, I'm almost certain at a certain point, the northern powers attacked the western powers down here and. As long as their agreement with uh, the Southeast down here held firm, then that's a good idea because they were OP, you know, even against all five of these down here. Um, they're pretty strong. They're tightly knit. They don't have to defend two of their flanks. Um, so they're back in their flank, I guess. And so it was a good move in that way. But a few days ago, um, Raya Force, he, he actually... He ran this by me and that's smart. Um, he said, you know, just philosophical question. Um, if you have a non-aggression treaty with somebody and they send sabotage spies against you, is that something that's worthy of going to war for? And I thought about it. I was like, okay, hold on. So I'm trying to think about like, if, um, you know, if we and, uh, I don't want to say Canada because we're we're just close allies with them. That's almost like we're in a coalition with them. But like if uh, if we and someone someone like uh, I don't know Japan or we and somebody like um, maybe even France or Germany, uh, traditionally kind of neutral, maybe South Africa or something, you know, another developed nation. But if we had a, if there was a war going on, we had a non-aggression treaty. Would us sabotaging? like literally blowing up their factories and causing them to lose thousands of tons of material, would that be an act of war? And that was pretty much Raya's direct question to me. And I answered and I said, well, it's definitely an act of aggression. Um, what, I would, what I would think 
diplomatically would be required is to mention it, bring it up, and and then their response would determine whether you went to war or not. So if their response was like, holy shit, we're so sorry, you know, um, we intended that to be intelligence gathering because I think everyone agrees that like we spy on Great Britain, one of our tightest allies, we spy on them, right? Intelligence gathering is sort of accepted to be okay. You know, do your best to figure out what's going on with us. We'll do our best to figure out what's going on with you, but nothing's being blown up, right? So it's, it's, it's less aggressive, although it, some might even call that aggressive. But I think Raya was okay with that intelligence gathering spies, you know, so you know where all of our troops are. In fact, that might even help us to have a better alliance because you know where we are, you know, we're not fucking around. At the same time, and this is according to Raya and then backed up by what I heard from Hertz later at the same time, those northern uh, those northern countries who had sent an economic spy. So I'm, I'm bridging this without telling you the backstory. So it turns out that actually did happen. Somebody from the Northern Coalition sent economic spies, one or more, against them uh, in that in their non-aggression uh, treaty partnership there against I don't know who Hemlin, Swedish Viking, or Admiral Duck Force, um, but they found out against about that. And at the same time, there was a troop buildup. So those are the two things that I think uh, the the uh, central powers down here used the sort of central Eastern powers used as a reason to then join with the um, sort of embattled five down here who was already at war with the North. They use that as a pretext to attack North now. So let's, let's unpack that. I said the word pretext and I think it was a pretext. I think, it, you know, um, let's just talk the best pretext of all time was when Beauregard uh, bombarded uh, Fort Sumter and started the Civil War, right? Was the North glad that that happened? Yes. Yes, they were. They were waiting for an opportunity, any excuse to start that war and to try to keep, you know, the South from seceding or whatever. So, but the point being, I think for sure, I think for sure the Southeastern powers realized that if they can join with the five down here, and wipe out their second, you know, the, their their strongest, uh, you know, opponent, then they are going to win the game, you know. And and so here's the thing, and I, I've said this about the South too, because one of my friends, Bill, Hogeye Bill, he calls himself Hogeye Bill down in Arkansas. He's a, the war of Northern aggression and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, you can't call it the war of Northern aggression if a Southern general, General Beauregard, fired the first shots like you just can't do it well they you know they baited them into it they blah blah blah. i'm like dude it doesn't matter it, you just if you don't want to go to war you just don't you just don't fire the first shot and so the building up of troops on the border coupled with uh sabotage actual you know actual military sabotage um, I think it was economic sabotage, but still you're destroying resources. You're literally destroying resources in a time of war when the person, you know, that country needs the resources. Those were egregious enough to break the treaty. And I, I think I stand with, despite the fact that I think it would have been, it would have been a more interesting game if they had gone on with their, uh, you know, with their agreement um, and then the North would have probably taken over. They'd, they already were taking over a lot of these, uh, a lot of France's territory over here. They were pushing down into, um, you know, former, what is this, Austria and, and whatnot. But uh, but what did happen was um, they they said, look, you know, sorry, you blew up um, one of our refineries, destroyed a bunch of materials. You're building up forces. It's off. It's off. And, you know, the the people in the north legitimately were like, oh, no, you know, that's not great. We didn't want that to happen. <laughs> and they even said something like, we thought we were going to have a great, you know, a great standoff at the end. And look, we all want to say, you know, if you've ever watched Survivor, they all say like, oh, I want to get to the end with the strongest players possible so we can have a, a slug out and blah, blah, blah. But like, nobody really wants that. I mean, I don't know, especially we've been playing 30 days here, you know, right? I think, I think what everybody wants is to win. And so it's always kind of the underdog who's saying, oh, 
you know, let's let it go to the end game because they know that the longer it goes on, that the more chance they have of evening up those, uh, you know, odds there and maybe having a chance to win because ultimately that's what you want is to win. So, um, but my understanding is from what I've seen in chat is that um, all of these people respect each other. And I think it's pretty clear that no just outright backstabbing or, you know, duplicity took place. Um, was it a gray area? Kind of. Although blowing up military materials during a war, that's an act of aggression. There's no question about that. So, but was it a big enough thing to 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 go ahead and go to war over someone you've got a non-aggression pact with? Uh, that's the gray area. But here's the thing. If you really, really don't want somebody to attack you, in fact, your entire game depends on them not attacking you, then you don't do aggressive stuff towards them. You don't stack borders and you don't, you certainly don't sabotage them. So to me, I'm going to call legit on this one. Um, again, it's like Beauregard, just dude, just don't, don't attack Fort Sumter. It's just a goddamn island. You've got the entire South. You're, you've all seceded. You've all drawn up your, you know, uh, your little, you know, uh, papers of, of secession or whatever the fuck. And, uh, you know, there's a few historians that say that if, uh, if Beauregard had not attacked, uh, a federal fort and, and what, uh, this is Colin Woodard is a, is a historian. And he said that, you know, a lot of Appalachia and a lot of sort of the, the Midwest South kind of Northern Arkansas, Southern Missouri, um, a lot of those people would never have entered the war um, except for to them, the stars and stripes were their flag and Beauregard attacked their flag. And so according to Colin Woodard is if they'd have just not done that, then honestly, the South might have seceded. And if they hadn't seceded, then it would have really, it would have really taken uh, Lincoln making a brazen act of aggression um, which some people say he was not willing to do. And if he had done that, more of the states would have stacked up against him. So you do see a lot of Appalachia. You do see a lot of, um, you know, again, places. Here's the, here's the thing. Places that fought for the North, but later on ended up in under the Mason-Dixie line, Mason-Dixon line. And they ended up later being blocked in with the with the south with the deep south because culturally they're more like the deep south but during that initial battle um they sided with the north because they were patriotic that that you know beauregard had attacked their flag and so again that was just a big strategic mistake now the fact if you look back at the civil war the fact is the southerners were just chomping at the bit to go to war they really wanted to go to war they sort of had that that uh, the man's pride, you know, they, they said things like one Southern boy is worth 20 Northerners, you know, stuff like that. And early in the war, that actually tended to be true, right? Like, actually, they were kicking ass. But the problem is they just kind of forgot that there's millions of fuckers up there. These are big cities and all those goddamn factories. And it's just after a while they got swamped and they, they say towards the end of the, the war, of course, they were walking around in barefoot. You know, they just didn't have any materials support, you know, coming in uh, equipment, you know, and it's just kind of a slow grind. Point being is that we kind of have a similar situation here is that they really needed to not give any pretext whatsoever uh, for this trio, for this sort of giant trio here. And, and, and they did. So now if we zoom in, we can see what's going on here is that, is that honestly, <laughs> Romania has been a powerhouse from the very beginning, has so much economy, so many resources coming down. You can just see now we have stacks on the board here. We got four cannon over here. I think we got seven over here. So that's 11, uh, two more. So that's 13. And then we've got heavy tanks on the board here. Um, we do see some bombers up here, which is nice. Uh, from northern Russia, the air power. But if you just look at the commissariate stuff, there's just not enough material here to defend. So it's a valiant battle, but you can see they are being pushed northward. Um, we can see now Romania has taken over a lot of territory that did belong to the northern coalition. Um, they are the northerners. Northerners are doing better uh, down here against that group of five because the group of five really was sort of um, a scrappy underdog uh, from early on. So just some really interesting uh, s sort of philosophical questions coming up here. And, uh, and ultimately, I think um, we can resolve it into saying that, that 
that n- there wasn't any foul play. Um, was there some opportunism? Yeah, I think there was. As I mentioned, I think I think that was exactly the pretext that these three needed to go ahead and say, you know what, we're way better off uh, teaming up with these five down here and smashing our number one competition in the game with their help, right? Until that point, they were kind of bound to stay out of it. <clears throat> now, so they could have attacked him against the five, and that would have sort of been a race for territory. And and here's let me just say this: I I, I honestly still think the Southeast Coalition here would have still won, but um, ultimately at the end of that, it would have been Goliaths, two Goliaths. I mean, if you think about what the North had, the North had all this stuff taken along this entire line, and they would have swallowed up. They had a better sort of angle on things. They had almost all of Europe here, um, although, you know, Smitty hit back, right? Uh, Italy hit back. But with their undivided attention, I think they would have went ahead and eat through here. Now, there's no question, again, that the East would have come down as well. They probably would have ended up swarming and taking the rest of the Middle East. But the thing is, it number one, it would have prolonged this game a lot because now we're talking a slow grind of eating up these five which they, you know, the five are not super powerful, um, but they've got a lot of territory, right? And and they're and when I say they're not super powerful, they're pretty powerful. Um, Smitty has had a navy um, in the field here who's been who's been fairly significant, and of course Italy and Spain have been fielding large armies uh, for quite some time as well. Although they haven't expanded quite a lot. I mean, that's not to speak about Spain, who's got countries all over the freaking world somehow. But uh, anyway, it's it's looking like honestly. Um, it's looking like the the uh, the war may be starting to wind down. If this is a firm alliance here, we now have eight countries. In fact, we have the entire sort of southern half of the map uh, facing off against three countries up here. So it does remind us kind of of uh, Benaya and his brother and Silver Star down here at one point just uh, – being attacked by the world, by the whole world. Now, again, sort of the wild card in this situation is what's going on with the new world. So what we do know is that the new world is at war with the five. So when I say it's all of the South against the North with nobody else, the new world has come in on the side of the North. However, they are so far away. They're so far away. Resupply lines are just devastatingly time consuming, right? To get to the place they're going. And, and I've been in the new world. I've, I know how that is, but that's not to say they're not nothing. They are something. They are a significant power over here and they've got a lot of Navy. So um, let's just see what happens. I mean, it, it, I'm going to say it's not over because anything can happen and it looks like people are still fighting, but I, I will also say that I think the tide has turned. We can put it that way uh, it, without some major mistake and or betrayal happening here which, you know, again, when I say betrayal, um, I mean, it would have to be within the confines, hopefully, of uh, some carefully worded, misleaded misdirection of some kind or another. Uh, or, you know, by the way, I've also said, if you are if you don't want to play as a, you know, let's say, for instance, these two down here didn't want to be vassals anymore, I would say what they would need to say is, hey, we're withdrawing our troops from your land. We don't want to be partners anymore. We're dissolving our partnership. And then when the other team says, okay, they do that. They withdraw their troops from, you know, from enemy land. You can leave them in the water or whatever you want to do, but just give them a heads up, you know, as, as opposed to a backstab. So something like that could happen. I don't know, but I will say it looks to me like the tide has turned. I will say I've seen excellent gameplay, wonderful gameplay. In fact, I, honestly, I think the deciding factor in most of the, pivotal things here has been social. Social things have happened. Um, Benaya was perceived as more of a threat than he was. Raya and Hemland and Viking here were able to gobble up large portions of the map, but socially appear non-threatening, possibly. Um, The North, I think, did the same thing, just quietly kind of gobbled up everything in the North great social games here, great diplomatic games. And then down here, a lot of interesting early gameplay happening here uh, where Oli wanted to take, uh, I don't know what this game would look like if Oli and the other countries had come over and taken uh, Southern United States, 
Um, with Greenland coming down, would they have been a mega coalition? I don't know. They they might have, maybe even probably would have kept all of this, and in addition had all of this. So I don't know. Um, but then they they went ahead and pivoted and joined up with these three. Again, good social play. It's what kept them on the map this whole time. And the way it's looking now, I mean, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say it. If the dominant team wins first place, that means that uh, this Western European coalition here silvers, and it means that the underdogs from the very beginning are gonna bronze, right? So very interesting. Now, again, that's not guaranteed. I don't know that to be true. Um, you know, speaking from that perspective, I would think maybe, maybe the new world should be focusing all of its military attention on wiping out these two so that, you know, all they have to do is, in fact, all they have to do is wipe out one of them because then they're no longer viable. They're no, no longer able to get a medal. Um, and then it would have to go, third place would have to go to them, right? Once the North is wiped out. But I don't think they're thinking in those terms. I think they're just sort of standing with the five down here. Um, or, I'm sorry, standing against the five down here with the North. So um, not... I don't, I don't see the New World as playing that strategic um, long game. I see them as playing sort of a loyalty-based, um, attacking the enemies of their allies kind of game, which they've done a good job of. They've, they've, sort of, um, they've sort of been effective at that. However, they have been driven out of America. That's something else to look at here. Morocco now has all of this. This is Italy. And this is, you know, Sweden still has the northern part of here. But down here, we do have Spain coming in. So all of the New World has been driven out of the British Isles. And, uh, and you know, maybe, maybe that's, are we seeing a move, a shift downward? Nope, that's actually, yeah, that's Greenland. So, uh, you know, that might be their very best thing to do in this end game is if the New World can, can take out, really, it looks like maybe Sweet Salt might be the one to take out here. Um, but how easy will that be? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Morocco has stuff here, but then so does Southern USA it has a lot of stuff down here. So interesting possibilities in the future, at least for who's going to get third place. We'll see moving forward. All right, that's it, guys. I don't want to waste a whole lot of your time. Um, again, I don't think there's, I, I thought I was going to have time for my last newspaper challenge. Um, I don't believe I'm going to because it is winding down. And right now it would just be a distraction. Um, before the end of the game, I will tell you what the last uh, newspaper challenge is going to be. But for now, I'll just sign out. Adios, ami, amigos, and amigas.